Moderna out just moments ago with data from its phase three trial of a combination flu and COVID-19 vaccine. And joining us with more on that right now is Stefan Bansell. He is the CEO of Moderna. And Stefan, it's great to see you. Why don't we talk a little bit about these results? We knew that you were working on a combination of, of COVID and flu. Um, first of all, what's the point of putting the two of them together? What's the benefit? Good morning, Becky. Uh, yes, we are very excited about this new phase three data of a combo flu plus COVID. I think uh, a lot of benefits, of course, first for consumers. I don't think many people like needles. And so if you want to be protected against flu and COVID, you can just get it in one shot. I think a huge value for public health leaders and, and payers, because in today's world, especially for the 60 plus, you know, it's becoming complicated. You need a flu booster every year, you need a COVID booster every year, and now you need an RSV booster. So it's a lot of things to remember, a lot of needles. And so we think that the market is going towards combination. It's already the, the case in the pediatric setting where you have a lot of combination vaccine. And we think that's going to be helping a lot of consumers, doctors and nurses, where you know there's also labor shortages and the payers. So I think everybody's winning. Uh, the data today that you're releasing is, is that it actually generated a stronger immune response. What's that mean? It was more effective to put the two of them together than to do them individually? What it showed is that against flu, we, we benchmark ourselves toward the best uh, flu vaccine available today, flu zone HD, and we show actually a little bit better in terms of uh, the antibody level. And in terms of COVID, this is actually our next-gen COVID product which we announced a positive phase three a month or two ago. And so we're showing it's actually better than the COVID vaccine available on the market today. So people are going to be way better off to take our combination product as early as the fall of 2025. I guess my reaction when I heard it is I'm less afraid of needles. I'm more concerned about the reaction that my body has with some of these vaccines. They make me physically ill for 24 hours or something. If it, it, if it increases the immune response, does that mean I'm more likely to get to get a, a reaction like that at a, at a, where I don't feel good or maybe I feel worse? Actually, no. If you look at the data, it's exactly the same um, side effect profile when getting each vaccine independently. So this is why we think it's a, it's a very good trade-off for consumers and doctors. You know, last year we, we saw a huge uh, decline in the number of people who wanted to get COVID vaccines. And I, I think it was an issue for you. It was an issue for Pfizer as well. How... How... how much do you think there will be an uptake this year? As we've gotten further out from the pandemic, fewer and fewer people feel the need to even get one of these. They've, they've been exposed to it, and they don't think it's nearly as serious as it used to be. Yes, it's clearly less serious than it used to be. And thank you for, for all the benefits we, we have. But if you look at the data in this season, the season that started in October of 2023, that's finishing right now, there's actually more than 400,000 people in the U.S. hospitalized because of COVID. I'm not talking pandemic. I'm talking just this season. It's more than flu. And so I think there's a lot of work to be done by companies like ours, by doctors, public health leaders, to make Americans realize that while the pandemic is obviously over, the virus is not gone. And people have actually a higher risk of getting hospitalized because of COVID than because of flu. The virus keeps evolving, as you saw last week. The FDA picked a new strain for the update of a vaccine for the fall. So I think we just need to keep the education so people realize they need both protection against flu and COVID. And again, having this combination will make things much easier. People don't have to remember which vaccine did they get. They just get the respiratory update for the year. And that will prevent a lot of hospitalization and deaths. The hospitalizations, is that mostly among elderly or people with high comorbidities? Yes, indeed, elderly and people with high comorbidities. So it's not necessarily something for the entire general population. That's correct. Our key target here is the people 60 and above because of age being a risk factor. Of course, people that have comorbidity factors, as you described. We should not forget that one of the challenges for mid-age adults with COVID is long COVID. Uh, as you know, there are millions of Americans that have got long COVID, and millions of Americans are out of a job because of long COVID. So it's still an issue that exists with COVID that does not exist with other, uh, you know, uh, viruses. And so if you look at, at, at some of us that are pretty close to it, you know, the reason I get my vaccine every season is not because I'm scared of being hospitalized. 
and I'm 52, but I have no known comorbidity risk, is because I do not want long COVID. Right, right. Um, Stefan, while you're here, let's talk about a couple other issues that you all have been involved with. One is the data that came back with the Moderna Merck skin cancer vaccine that showed a survival benefit, um, not just a survival benefit, but also a, a, a failure of recurrence for people who were taking this along with Keytruda. Yes, we are very happy uh, last Monday, just a week ago at ASCO, to present the new data and the survival curve. And what is exciting, uh, as you say, Becky, is that you have, you know, close to two out of three people on our study that have no distant metastasis, which is if you get melanoma somewhere in, on their body and it's uh, surgically removed, they do not have three years after any distant metastasis, which, as we know, it's metastasis that drives deaths. It's really the primary uh, tumor of a cancer. And so this data is really exciting. We're going to be talking with regulators to consider an accelerated approval because now we have the proof of durability of protection. We're also building a big factory in Massachusetts for that. And we believe this is going to be uh, applicable, this technology, to many of our cancers. You know, we're in phase three for lung cancer, uh, prostate cancer, soon bladder cancer. And so that's going to be a big paradigm change in cancer, we believe. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, obviously, we care a lot about what you guys are doing with cancer and want to hear more. The other big news you have is your genetic liver condition treatment got into the FDA's uh, pilot program for rare disease. And I think that's pretty exciting, too, just the entire pilot program. What you hope to do with rare disease, which often gets left behind because there's not a big patient population. So it's not necessarily been something where uh, medicine companies in the past have thought, OK, this is an area we want to focus on. Yes. So one of the beauty of Moderna technology is we can get mRNA uh, into the liver. And because the liver is such an organ to produce protein for all of us to stay healthy, there's a lot, actually, of uh, rare disease in the liver. As you say, sometimes it's only a few thousand people. Some ultra rare disease is maybe a few hundred people. But those patients have no hope. Those parents have no hope for their children. And we want to change that. We are very happy now that we have kids, you know, up to three years, every two weeks on the Moderna medicine. We've seen a, a remarkable impact in terms of their hospitalization rate. And so we are very pleased that the FDA saw that this data is very exciting. And through this new program, is going to help us accelerate those drugs getting to patients. So that's the third modality. If you think about Moderna, there is, of course, the infectious disease vaccine that we've spoken a lot about. with the news today of a flu plus COVID combo, cancer, and then, of course, the reality is a free, strong pillar of medicine and growth for the company.